What is going on guys? What is going on? In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to sample kick uh, in the probably the easiest way without using too many plugins like EQs and compressors and none of that stuff. You really only need one specific plugin to pull this off. And uh, if you can't afford it, then you know, there's always other ways. <laughs> but anyways, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, the track that we're going to sample the kick from is called uh, Our Story by Marco. Uh, this is the Michael Brown remix that I'm going to be sampling the kick from. Uh, yeah, so let's get into it. The first thing that you do, especially if you're using something like Ableton, always make sure that you check like, you know, that the fade isn't like up like this. Because whenever you like import a track or a sample or snare kick, it doesn't really matter. I can show you. Ableton, for some reason, always put the fades up. Uh, so yeah, always make sure that you pull it all the way back so that you get like the initial transient, or, like the attack part of the kick, or whatever type of sample you're using. You know, that's super important. Anyways, uh, let's get into it. Yeah, you can already hear it, right? Uh, what I tend to notice, especially when it comes to sampling kicks, is that it's always very clean uh, in the intros and outros. You can also sample the kicks in the drop, but the drop tends to have a lot of things going on. So I would highly recommend, at least if you want to get like the, just the attack or the top end of the kick, to definitely go for the intro or outro. Like this part, for instance. This one is kind of, I don't know, it wasn't that clean. It's kind of a little bit soft, I think. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Yeah, okay. This one is okay. So let's go for this one. Um, you like this. I don't really warp it when I'm sampling the kick. I will warp it afterwards, but when I'm first sampling, I never warp it because it adds like al algorithms and stuff like that, and you want to keep it as clean as possible uh, during the sample. So yeah, when you're using Ableton, always make sure that you start from the very beginning, and also make sure that the, um, if you're using something like Volume Shaper, that it's actually starting from the very initial beginning here, especially if you're using Ableton, you know, everything under 9.2. Like, you know, you don't want to sample this. Otherwise, you will have to move this, and you know, that's so unnecessary. Um, anyways, yeah, so you want to begin from the very beginning, like this. Uh, what I usually go for is this preset. I mean, it's, it's, it's so fast. We, I mean, we're almost done. But not yet. you can, I mean, you don't have to use volume shape, but you can pretty much use uh, L X for LFO tool as well. Uh, I mean, but volume shape pretends to be what I find, you know, the easiest, at least the fastest way to do this. You can also do it in Volume Shaper 3. It doesn't necessarily have to be number 4. Anyways, uh, so this is how it sounds like. I mean, we're pretty much done already. Just make sure that this one is pulled all the way back. And if you only want, like, the initial transient, you can also, you know, pull it further back like this so that you don't get so much of the low end. Right. Right? Only the transient. If you want to go O C D, uh you can also of course like uh this is what I love about volume shape before is that you can decide like which part of the frequency that you wanna initially affect the volume of. So if I do like this, I will take out everything in the low end and everything from above 712 hertz and above will be included in the sample, right? This is when you get that little, little thin initial kick. Uh, yeah, but I'm not going to do that because it's not really necessary in this sample. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. And if you want more attack, you can just add something like the transient shaper. Uh, and then just pull that bitch all the way back like this, right? And then, I mean, you have your kick. From there, you can just loop it and then record it, of course. Uh, now, I'm not going to do it right now because 
the way that I've set up this recording is that I have to have the volume on my sound card, uh, my USB sound card pretty loud in order for you guys to hear it clearly. That's why this shit is clipping like fuck. But anyways, you will just record a sample and then you can warp it or whatever and you will have your kick. Uh, it's really that simple. I didn't use any type of EQs and it's pretty fast. I mean, once you get into this and you really make it a habit, you can even like uh, save like a rack like this. And then just call it like uh, kick sampling and then save it. So whenever you find a track that you like, you can just import it. Uh, if you're using Ableton, always make sure that you start from the very beginning and then cut it off like at here, loop it, and you're done. You will have kicks within like minutes. So yeah, so that's it. That's the way that I sample kicks. Hope you guys got some value out of it. Uh, if you have any tips or you know you want to share your ways of uh, sampling kicks, definitely share it in the comments below. I would love to what you guys uh, you know do when you're sampling but this is the way that I do it I used to do it like uh, I was using a multiband compressor something like ozone dynamics and then I would lower everything underneath 500 and then use a transient shaper but it, it wouldn't sound so clean but this is like clean as fuck this is the cleanest it gets you know so clean anyways thank you guys for watching be sure to subscribe comments like the video and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Peace.